All right, we have more. We're not done yet. It's a special day today, so we need to look at where we are at, where we're going, and what uh, the future will bring with our collective efforts. So our next uh, conversation will be sports. We'll take this report and we'll have a guest afterwards. As Nigeria celebrates a diamond jubilee, the sports industry has been on a topsy-turvy ride and the drawing board is still as active as ever. Sports has been a veritable national activity, unifying Nigerians of diverse culture since our amalgamation in 1914. Since Emmanuel Arinze Ifeajuna won a gold medal in high jump during the Commonwealth Games in 1954, to Hogan Kid who became the world featherweight boxing champion in 1957, to Dick Tiger, who won the middleweight crown and the world light heavyweight crown, other athletes have gone on to do the nation proud on the African and global sports scene. At the height of our agitations for independence in the years leading up to 1960, several socio-political pressures that ensued in the Nigerian political community stealthily stunted the growth and the advancement of sporting activities in the country. After independence, Nigeria's Green Eagles, as it was then popularly called, qualified for the Olympic Games held in Mexico in 1968, and this greatly upped Nigeria's ratings in the world of football. The Golden Neglects won the Kodak Under-17 World Cup, now FIFA Under-17 World Cup, in China in 1985. These outstanding exploits connected with Shoma Ajunwa's golden heroics in the long jump event and the Under-23 Dream Team's football victory in Atlanta 96, which served as a reminder to the rest of the world the great potentials of the country in sports. No matter how quality and how brilliance individually you have in your team, the collective effort will always be ahead of the individual brilliance. But of course, we were able to you know, tell ourselves that uh, let's work as a team, let's help one another, let's defend as a team. Uh, that confidence, you know, uh, you know, and that statement gave us the belief, gave us the confidence that we are here as a team. Uh, if we lose, we lose as a team. If we win, we win as a team. And that really inspired us, you know, going all the way. When we played Brazil, I remember our first game against them. Uh, we knew we lost that game, but it was our proper mistakes our, that cost us the goal. And then when we have the privilege to play them again in the semi-final, uh, we went into that game, you know, having the confidence that uh, if we do what is needful, you know, there will, the possibility of we playing in the final is there. Many sporting greats have served the nation meritoriously by offering their talents and zeal to the service of the country. It is sad that the expected government efforts on immortalizing these men and women are hardly considered. It's a very, very painful that uh, our great sportsmen cut across all strata of um, sporting activities have been neglected by by this by Nigerian government, and it is not um, a good development, and it's uh, disheartening, especially for the upcoming stars. And that is more reason why you find um, most um, Nigerian uh, citizen uh, flying and uh, vying for. Uh, wearing uh, other countries' color in international events. And um, I'm, I'm personally very, very disappointed in her government because this is uh, an area where government can annex and um, improve on our poor uh, IGR, internally generated revenue, and uh, show up our um, revenue um, uh, uh, cut across. Rashidi Yekini, who happened to be my client, is still, and we are still crying for Kora State government to, to immortalize um, late Rashidi Yekini. I'm not even talking of Nigeria, even Kora State that um, where Rashidi Yekini came from have failed to even immortalize uh, late Rashidi Yekini, not to talk of Nigerian government. So it's disheartening and it's, it's a very sad uh, development. The consistent fall in the standard and sports facilities coupled with the erosion of the sporting enthusiasm that once greeted our sporting arena has made Nigeria lose its mark on the world stage. In recent times, the country has witnessed the mixed fortunes in sports and various accompanying challenges. Aside the victory of the Super Eagles at the African Nations Cup in 2013, the Super Falcons' achievements and some other stand-alone victories of our junior football teams and other sporting contingents, much has not really been achieved 
and a lot is left to be desired in terms of sports development, facility upgrade, inventive offering to athletes and proper talent development and management in the sporting arena. We are now lagging behind and letting other countries like South Africa have the cause, take the lead. Um, is it a lost cause? No, I don't think it's a lost cause. But I believe um, with more government intervention in the sense of funding the athletes, not really paying so much attention to the federation, but funding the athletes directly, I think um, we can get our sports back to where it should be. According to the pundits, the future of sports in Nigeria is bright and eventful if the stakeholders take the right step and make the necessary efforts. Policymakers are advised to reenact sports education as a mandatory subject and extracurricular activity in primary and secondary schools, upgrade and revamp facilities for various sports around the country, and create a national developmental framework for sports. Udoka Njoko, reporting for PLOS TV Africa. Thank you very much, Udoka, for that. To report, uh, the world of sports is uh, ever-evolving, especially in Nigeria. 60 years on, we've had so many things. A 1996 Atlantic Dream Team, numerous Olympic and Paralympic medals, several FIFA trophies, track and field records, as well as outstanding individuals. How has Nigerian sports evolved? And uh, joining us uh, to quickly share his expert analysis is Kunle Sholaja, the editor-in-chief of uh, Sports Village Square. Um, I, I don't remember, but just before we... Thank you for joining us. Let, let's start with that. Thank you for joining us, uh, Mr. Sholaja. It's a pleasure. I was just about saying I don't remember the last... Um, since 1996, really, I, I don't remember the last time I have felt that level of happiness, you know, from... Uh, a Nigerian sports team. Um, it's been such a long time and it doesn't feel like, you know, we might get that, you know, level of happiness uh, back again anytime soon. So with the current crop of young sportsmen and women, do you think Nigerian sports has post-independence improved in any way? Well, we have done well in some sports, and, uh, but there is no room for complacency. I believe that we should have done better. If you, if you consider a country like Croatia, for instance, Croatia was one of the new nations that came up in the 90s. It, came, it went to the World Cup for the first time in 1998, got to the semi final, and eventually came third in that World Cup, France 98. The last World Cup, they got to the final. And this is a country that you could say is just about two decades old as an independent nation. So what is working in Croatia and why is it not working here? I think everything has to do with policy some assault. We don't have good policy in sports in Nigeria. We have a national sports commission in uh, some years back, but it has gone into comatose. As a matter of fact, it was uh, uh, scrapped in 1991. So, so to say, our sports is just like a ship in the, in the mighty ocean without a captain just rowing, I mean, just going uh, along the side that the wind is blowing it. That is what I can say about Nigerian sports. But, but why do you think that is? At what point did we lose interest in, and of course, our love for sports? Because I would say that Nigerians still love sports. So at what point did the, the government sort of lose interest in financing and in supporting and in, of course, leading, you know, doing what was needed to be done to ensure that our sports sector continued to thrive? Well, Nigeria's law for sports is unquestionable. But having enough strategy to achieve the good results that we desire is another thing. We don't have a focus on what we really want in football. What we just achieved is just of ad hoc uh, successes, and we uh, and we, send, uh, we we tend to go complacent after that. You mentioned Atlanta '96, for instance. That was Nigeria's most glorious uh, effort at the Olympic Games. But if you consider what Kenya, a fellow African country, has achieved in the 
Olympic Games, then whatever we achieved in 1996 comes to nothing. As at now, all our medal hall, which is made of three gold medals and uh, some silver and uh, bronze medal, everything total since 1952 that we entered for the Olympic is 25. For the same period, in fact, for a shorter period, Kenya has 103 medals, most of them gold. So what is Kenya doing? They focus on their areas of strength, and that is where the issue of comparative advantage comes in into sports. You don't just go for a sport because of its popularity. You go for a sport where you have the highest opportunity of winning. And that is where we are lacking. We go to the next Olympic Games now in uh, 2021, the Tokyo Olympics 2021. We don't have any focus on what we want to achieve. We just go there because you must be there. And that reminds me of uh, the uh, nationwide address of President, I mean, the then Governor General of Nigeria, Dr. Nam Gaziki, which is the, only, the first and the only time so far that we have a national broadcast that is solely focused on football, I mean, on sports. That was January 1, 1964. When Dr. Inam Gazikwe was trying to orientate Nigeria, that we should not just go into sports because we believe that, oh, the honor is more in participating than winning. But things have changed. We must go for sports now with the intention of winning. And that is my take. The National Sports Commission was established in 1964 as the National Sports Council and became National Sports Commission in 1971. It was abrogated in 1991. It came in via presidential fiat under Abata in 1996, but and then it has now been scrapped. Now, we, our sports can never move forward except we have a National Sports Commission which is composed of a board and has technocrats who will come up with policies, who will come up with modes of uh, operation, who will come up with how we must be involved in sports and then how we organize our sports. That is the only way I think our sports can move forward and we do better than we have achieved in the past years. All right. I want to also ask from your um, analysis, um, what other sporting events you feel like Nigeria should start to, you know, pay a little bit more attention to? We've tried football for the longest time, you know, um, try to, of course, maintain our status since um, 1996 in Atlanta. Um, African Cup of Nations also and a few other tournaments, you know, that we've also always struggled to get all the way across. But what other sporting event would you say that Nigeria should maybe start to pay a little more focus uh, towards? Wrestling, for instance, we have Daniel Egali, who is directing our sports in that direction, I mean, in that discipline. And there are, there are indications that he will do well in organizing that sport. But because wrestling is not our national sport, we tend to relegate whatever uh, achievements we are making in that sector. Badminton is another sport. Even though it's not, a, it's, uh, it's not a popular sport, but it's a sport that we, if, we, if we concentrate on it, and it has less cost of organization than other uh, big events like athletics and, uh, and football. If we can focus on that, our medal prospects would be higher. And then again, to going back to a policy that uh, one of the past sports ministers of this country, Kazobo, tried to implement in the 1990s, which is this decentralization of sports bodies in Nigeria. Our sports bodies tend to be concentrated on the federal capital before it was in Lagos and now it's in Africa. Whereas those sports bodies, sports federations, should be concentrated in their area, in their catchment area. For instance, we talk of aquatic sports. We think of River State, we think of Delta State, we think of parts of Bender State and part of Ondo State, or even cross rivers. These are areas where we can develop and ensure that we tap talents there. And that can only happen if the federation is situated in that uh, part uh, of the country. We talk of equestrian sports, 
which is a media is a media winning sport at the Olympics, but it's not popular here. But we know that horsemanship is very popular in the north. Why don't we have some people organizing uh, equestrian sports, and then we know that we have potentials of winning uh, a gold medal in it when it comes to the Commonwealth Games or when it comes to the Olympic Games. Fantastic, um, actually. And I also want to talk, um, um, I think Felicity brought that up earlier, about our old um, um, well, sporting heroes. Uh, you want to go ahead and, and throw that one in? Uh, well, they don't seem to have a lot of recognition, really. What, what, what's, uh, what's responsible for this and what can be done? Well, our sporting heroes don't have recognition because there's no sports policy that will ensure that whatever anyone has done is well appreciated and recognized. I said we document our sports, and that is one area where Nigeria sports is lacking documentation. Because of uh, because of lack of documentation, even the achievements of these heroes are never known. I remember uh, talking to the late Samibian some years back, who was one of the members of the uh, famous. Uh, 1949 UK tourist. He was honored sometime in 1987 and was given an ID card, which should enable him to enter into any sports arena in Nigeria. He told me that the first time he entered a sporting arena and he showed the ID card, somebody just collected it and flung it away and said, I'm an old man, you better go, go, go and find your way. And that is one of, that is Nigeria's first goalkeeper. You know, of the of, of the national team. So, and if you talk of the late Mudalawa, even Shell Modegan is just a, because it's so obvious. I mean, his face is seen everywhere. Otherwise, he too will have gone into oblivion. The current generation will not know what he has done. Just like the, I mean, the, uh, because there's no documentation, there's nothing to really indicate that Shell Modegan, the Christian Chuku, uh, Doki Abisemeka, and Co. Did this country were proud 40 years ago when we won our first nation's cup? But because there is no documentation, all these are forgotten by the current uh, uh, generation. What a very um, interesting story there. Thank you very much, uh, Kunle Sulaja, uh, for your thoughts. Yeah, um, and uh, some of the things that you also mentioned, uh, other uh, sporting um, um, areas that we may also want to pay attention to. I'm looking forward to... Um, having more uh, discussions and, of course, an extended conversation on uh, some of the other things that you mentioned. Thank you once again for joining us in the conversation. Uh, my yeah, voice to the thanks. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, it, it, it's okay. been an interesting time here today. The thoughts that has been shared, the insight. I mean, we have a lot of resource in this country. It, it bothers me that uh, leadership doesn't seem to want to harness them. Yes. Look at the two people that talked about education, for instance. There is a repertoire of knowledge, you know, experience that they can bring to bear on how we can, you know, work on improving our education system. Security, for instance. There are loads of people who have very important contribution that they can make. How can, you know, we evolve a system? We spoke with Dr. Dan um, earlier, uh, Dr. Dan Ikeri from Unilag, um, he talked about uh, the system of um, federalism that was practiced in the early times and the necessity for involvement in, of the people in decision-making process. Yes. And that was key. We really need to do a lot. So at 60, uh, a lot of persons are saying Happy Independence Day. I celebrate being a Nigerian, but sometimes you're compelled, you know, to ask these questions. Question, and, and, you know, why are we? We have so many intelligent, resourceful, industrious, creative people. Why are we still not getting it this right? It is also, you know, some other thing that um, I feel you know, we should also talk about it. I think it was one of the things that was brought up in the morning was our leadership selection process. That is one of the reasons, you know, you may not get to see some of these people in those positions. You will never get to, you know, you may never get to see. Uh, well, I mean, uh, in, uh, there's in, something uh, I said uh, in, in a local parlance in Nigeria, for the benefit of those that might not uh, understand, we, we say, Koniman die, 
Koniman Beriam, meaning that if, you, if, if you have to, you know, outsmart somebody that is, that is devilish, you have to be two times as devilish. I mean, I'm just trying to explain yes. to do, for those that might not understand uh, what I meant. So if we have a system that is broken, Nobody's going to, Obasan just said it, a lot of our leaders have said it, nobody's going to give anything to us. And I guess it's our cue to round up and stop talking and uh, just um, allow you to enjoy uh, more of the Independence Day celebration. But I must say it's been lovely uh, being here today. It's been fantastic. You yes, know, and I hope that we can, I hope that next time that we have a conversation like this, we would have taken a few steps, even if it's just one step forward. Amen um, I, to I, that. I really, We're a praying nation. Amen to that. I don't want us <laughs> to have a repeat of this Independence Day speech in 2021. Um, and no change, you know, at all. I don't want us to repeat we shouldn't because it feels be like be creating more foundation. Copy and paste, we should be you know, building exactly. on the foundations that we've already. It feels created. like a copy and paste Independence Day speech. You know, these are the right things to say at this time. They don't seem realistic. We haven't done any of these things, but let's just write them there. Um, we have no plans to put any of these things in, in play, but let's just write them there and tell people these things. Well, we'll continue um, to work, we'll yeah. continue to talk, we'll continue to evolve ideas and hope that someday Always. we'll get just a little bit closer to the El Dorado that we seek. A country where inclusiveness, you know, everybody feels, I belong here exactly. and not feel like, mm, this is not my country. It is ours and we must all work together to ensure that it becomes indeed the giant of Africa. Thank you for staying with us all through uh, the times that uh, we've, uh, I mean, talked uh, and issues that we've discussed here from 4 p.m. Uh, to now. That's goodbye for now. I am uh, Osaogi Ogbonwan. And I am Felicity Eziwike. Happy Independence Day, Happy Independence. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.